Hello and welcome to my channel, Brad Wardle, call sign Captain Wingnut from Cougar Ridge Ranch, high in the Uinta Mountains of Eastern Utah. And today, uh, we're out here at the abattoir, the slaughterhouse, and uh, they've got some fat set aside for me that we're going to do some rendering. I'm going to show you how we render fat. But I'm also going to pick up some bones and scraps and, and uh, scrap meat for the dogs. So. Let's come along, I'm going to show you how we render fat, how we uh, clarify it and, and process it and get it into the freezer so we can use it in the future for other things. And uh, just a word of warning, a viewer discretion as we go in for the next couple of minutes and pick up the cow parts and pieces. Uh, you may want to fast forward through this part if you're a little squeamish on blood, bones and uh, meat. Alright, let's get going. put it on low and I just let it slowly slowly melt down all of the tissue that's in the fat will cook and right now it smells like I'm cooking hamburger not a not a bad smell at all and uh, I've got a, I started out with a five gallon bucket of beef fat I'm down to about a quarter left to put in here <clears throat> this will uh, boil down and it will become, you'll see in a little bit, it'll become quite a boil. And then all you have to do is take a strainer and strain off all of the impurities that will float to the top and all of the things that are cooked. And it will be just pure, pure, pure filtered tallow. Then I'll put it in some uh, bread pans or some other pans and let it uh, go back to its uh, hard state and then I'll cut it up and shrink wrap it and put it in the freezer and then use it to make all kinds of things make suet for the birds with seeds uh, can feed it to the chickens they need the extra calories in the winter uh, the dogs need the extra calories in our extreme cold and the um, White Girl Soap across the street can use it to make the old-fashioned tallow soap, which is uh, becoming quite popular today. Um, we can also make lotions and potions out of it. Um, I wouldn't suggest eating it. It seems to be a pretty big thing right now for people to be eating it. It's 130 calories per teaspoon, and it's trans fat, the worst fat that you could put in your body. So I don't need it. My wife doesn't need it. But uh, some people out there are eating it, they get it in capsules, I don't know, I, I would not advise that, but you know, you're, you're the steward of your own body, so you do what you need to do. So that's how I'm uh, melting this down, we'll uh, let this go for an hour or two, and then we'll come back. This is done, this will look like pork rinds in 
uh, when all the fat, all the grease, all the oil is boiled out of the tissue, it will look like pork rinds. As you can see, quite a bit of fat in the pan already. It'll go down to about a half if I took this out right now, but it will get better. It just takes a long time, a couple of hours. A couple hours of cooking. Oh boy, it sure smells good. So at this point, it's uh, still really, really hot. If I shoot the temperature, I'll find out it's 390 degrees. It's still very hot. But what I do is I take this solid material out. Strain it. Put this strainer on this pan. Just going to take some of these pieces out. A little strain on here. And when I get all of these out and strained, and I'll show you how we strain the last of it. These have cooled. The dogs love them. I don't like them. They still have that heavy trans fat. I don't like them. Now you can see that there's still quite a bit of junk in there. This stuff is hotter than hot, so be really careful not to splash it on you because it will burn. There's a lot of debris still left in there. And the other stuff is in the bottom of the bucket I brought all the fat in. And that will cool and the dogs will love it. So I'll show you how we I'm gonna let this cool down a lot so I can handle it. Uh, almost to congealing, uh, and uh, then I'm gonna show you how we filter out the rest of this and have pure oil. So now, what I'm going to do is pour off a lot of this from the big pan. I can strain off some of the bottom. It's got all the junk. Now, this may not look like there's junk going in, but there's junk going in there. We're going to filter this in just a little bit, but we're going to filter off more of what's in here. I'll show you what's in here. Ooh. Look at that nasty stuff, yeah. So I'm going to show you how we fil how I filter that off right now. Take a smaller pan. Strainer on this pan because I don't want to plug up too badly my uh, oil filters. Bones, so I do it with this. There's a little bit left in there, but that's just going to get washed out. And you can see there's quite a bit of junk here. I'll go put it in the dog's bowl and they're not real keen on it either because they like the they like the meat part from the bones and fat that you saw at the beginning but um, they do like this at times and if they don't like it all the little birds come and get it they like it for the fat so I'll get this done I'm gonna pour it all back in that big container 
and we're gonna go over to the table and I'm gonna show you how I strain it out really good. Well, what I do, you want to, you want this uh, fat, this tallow to be seriously filtered. So I'm going to triple filter it and that is not terribly amount of work. You don't have to do it three times. All you do is you just stack three filters together and it will get filtered three times as it goes through. Just make sure you don't put the seams together when you do this. And once I get this in, then I put a clip on here to hold it. Because as soon as the filter gets warm, it can collapse. And then it's tough to keep it in the same place. So I just I can fold them over. Three filters is tough. One filter is easy. Three filters is a little more of a challenge. Okay. I just take this hot oil. It's about 150 degrees right now. It's not terribly hot to deal with. And I just pour it in like that. And it's going to be a little slow because it's going through three filters, but eh, for the most part you can pour pretty good. It's still hot enough that touching the pan is uncomfortable. But it moves along with pretty good speed. Take an occasional break. Whoops. Spill on this Chrissy's tablecloth. I do this similar when I melt and strain and clean and filter the beeswax. Although we do have to do it, you can't. I usually run two filters at a time and you can't. Uh, filter it enough. I usually end up doing it about seven times to get really good purified beeswax. Uh, just as a note, tallow beef fat like this, once it's rendered and cleaned, uh, it will last on the counter in a mason jar for uh, about a year actually. It'll go liquid in room temperature and um, It'll last about a year before it goes rancid. If you put it in the fridge and keep it in the fridge where you have to warm it up to use it or just dig it out, uh, it'll last for a couple of years. And if you put it in the freezer, it will last indefinitely. So this is a 16 quart pan. And you remember I started out with a five gallon bucket full of uh, big chunks of beef fat. And this is what it's got left. It's about nine quarts. It was clear full, clear to the top twice, and it melted down into about nine quarts. So a five gallon bucket of basically rough cut up fat ends up to be about nine quarts, which is quite a bit. Okay, so now we're just going to put this purified three filtered oil into bread pans. Uh, let it congeal and then we can uh, vacuum pack it. Well, you don't need to put vegetable coating or anything in these because this is just pure oil. <laughs> it's going to do the very thing, but you can see just how nice and pure and crispy and shiny that oil is. Beautiful. I like making candles. You can make candles out of this too. It works really, really good for candles. Although it has a kind of a deep fry smell when you're make, burning candles. It's not a, not a pure waxy uh, medium that, that works really good for candles, but 
Nevertheless, you could use it. I put the whole cut over it, and then the backsplash drips off the back of the cup go in here. And I'm not the steadiest hand in the world, so I don't fill them clear to the top. And I end up spilling them. I'm going to save a little bit more cleanup. On aisle nine, I just fill them partial up. Clean them up quarter of an inch from the top. Now this works really good for making suet the little birds in the winter. All you have to do is go down and buy a bag of bird seed, add it to this, just fill this up with bird seed, pour this in, and when it's all congealed and hard, I like to put it in the fridge and get it really hard then just cut off slices and go put them out for the birds they love it it's really good for them the fat helps the little birds through the winter and I'll cut a slab of this off and throw it in the chicken coop for the chickens to peck at uh, a big slab like this doesn't last We're, we've got 30 chickens and big slab like that probably doesn't last five minutes in the chicken coop and they've gobbled it down but they do really good with it they need the fat they need the energy hey what's a chicken's egg yolk made out of right a lot of fat and so in the winter time I believe it's hard for them to get enough fat in their diet to keep warm and to produce eggs we, we've got chickens producing eggs all year long. When all of our neighbors are saying, our chickens aren't producing anything, ours are still laying. We're still getting a dozen eggs a day. So I think there's something to feeding them fat in their diet. They don't have to expend all those calories trying to stay warm. They can actually make eggs instead of shutting down in the winter time. going to have still more oil than I have bread pans so I'll show you the my alternate trick otherwise you gotta heat it back up and get it out of these and get it processed and then heat it back up and pour it back in them you don't have to filter it again that's one good thing but I've gone down to the dollar store and I've gotten some little roasting pans and they'll work great just to take the rest of this oil and then when they're done you just get a sink of hot water and you just dip this down in the hot water don't let the water go in just dip it in the hot water it'll loosen up and come over to the table with a with a, uh, a protective cloth on it to tip it upside down or a cutting board and it will uh, work just beautifully and then you can just cut it up into the sizes and the pieces and, that you want you can see I've got about an inch in there and so if I just cut it into six pieces I'll have six one inch patties and that'll work perfectly all right I'm gonna let this congeal set up and we'll come back and cut them up and put them in the in the uh, vacuum packer Okay, so here we go. Oh, I'm going to take a spatula here and just kind of go around the edges just a little bit to uh, well, maybe overheated it there. It's starting to come up on the edges. That's okay, we'll deal with that in a moment. Get a little air in there so it'll come out. And we'll push here and you can see that it has come out and there it is a little bit on the pan here we'll just scrape this off and it smells like leaf towel
once I've got them all packaged up, I have to put them in the sink and wash them because they are greasy. You can't not get greasy doing this. So we get them all washed up. Then I bring them back to the table, dry them down, put them on the scale, and uh, see what they weigh. One pound, three and a half ounces. I write that on here. One pound, 3.5 ounce. And then, I don't, you also have to put the date on. 3-7-23. And then don't forget to put on what it is. Because once this is frozen, it could look like fish sticks, it could look like ice cream, it could look like a whole bunch of things. And you don't want to open this up thinking it's ice cream and take a bite of that. No way, Jose. Then off to the freezer. So that's how we uh, render beef fat into tallow. Hey, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe already. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Brad Wardle, call sign Captain Wingnut, signing off. Adios, partner.